It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. Hello, I'm Leo Laporte. Francis asks, I think, a question a lot of us are asking. Is there a better way than Sonos? Next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from the Twit LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Here's a question uh, that's very timely, very topical from Francis. Hi, Francis. Leo, been a big fan for many years. Keep up the good work. Unless they do a 180, I doubt Sonos will survive their recent decision to make their products obsolete. What can you recommend Sonos customers do to keep using our expensive speakers? Connect an Echo Dot to every speaker as they stop working? What, what do you suggest? Francis, this is a question that's big on my mind, too, because I spend... I spent... A lot, and I'm going to make that past tense, a lot of money on Sonos speakers. Uh, this week, Sonos backed down just a little bit, not a huge amount from their original announcement. So Sonos is an internet-connected speaker system. They've been around for a long time. In fact, I bought my first Sonos more than 10 years ago. Back then, uh, if you wanted to listen to streaming internet music from Spotify or Gosh, what was it back then? <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, Google Music, Apple Music wasn't around yet. Um, you you would connect your computer to it, then you connect the computer to speakers. But you couldn't do something like have speakers in multiple rooms because they'd be out of sync. It'd sound like an echo chamber. Sonos comes along with a really interesting technology, their own network, multiple room sound. They were the only, for years, the only ones that could do it. You could start playing something on one Sonos speaker in your bedroom, have that same music coming out of your living room, your kitchen, your bathroom, wherever, your closet, and it would all sound, it would all be in sync. It would all sound the same. That was great. Whole, they called it party mode, whole house music. And for a long time, Sonos owned that market. Now, many companies can do it. In fact, Sonos says Google stole that idea because Google can do it with their speaker systems. They're in court fighting that one out right now. Sonos said uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, these older speakers, speakers that were sold more than a few years ago, previous to, you know, the Play 5 speakers from 20, I think 2015 and earlier, uh, we're going to offer you 30% uh, discount to upgrade to the new speakers because the new speakers have more capabilities, faster chips, more RAM. Of course they do. You know, I mean, some of these speakers, some of my Sonos speakers are 10 years old. Of course the new speakers have more power. And we want to get everybody on that new system. It's very analogous to what's happening with Microsoft Windows 7, right? Microsoft wants everybody to move to Windows 10. Then everybody will be on the same platform. It's easier. They don't want to have to support old software. And this is the problem. You thought you were buying speakers. Speakers don't wear out. Speakers don't go obsolete. But you weren't buying speakers. You were buying a computer system with an attached speaker. And the computer system does become obsolete. Sonos doesn't want to support it anymore. People who took advantage of the 30% trade-in, that's a good deal, found out very quickly that those speakers were bricked. Sonos sent an update down that made those old Sonos devices not only no longer Sonos devices, but not even speakers. You couldn't use them for anything. Seems like kind of a waste. They're pretty good speakers. It'd be nice if I could just hook them up to a stereo or something, right? Nope. Then Sonos said, we're not going to offer updates, software updates, security patches, the kind of thing Microsoft said about Windows 7. We're not going to do that for any speakers older than 2015. And then they said, oh, and another thing. If you have a mix on your network, as I do, as most people do, of older and newer speakers, none of, none of the speakers in the network are going to get updated. And that made people very, very angry. All of a sudden, their whole network was obsolete. They were being pushed, forced, some would say, into selling the old speakers so that they could continue to use the new speakers. Sonos backed down a little bit on that. They said, well, we'll, we'll figure out a way that we can make like two, two networks on your, on your, in your house. The newer systems will be separated. They won't talk to one another, but at least the newer systems get updated. That's not a very good solution. The whole point of the Sonos system is that you see all the speakers in the house and you can turn whichever ones on you want, not a two system Sonos. So that's not a great solution. Uh, 
this is the problem here is a mismatch in our expectations. We think of speakers as you know kind of eternal. They're a durable good. They why they don't wear out particularly. They don't get obsolete. They're speakers, and we thought we were buying speakers. Just like the people who bought the Samsung refrigerator with the built-in internet browser thought they were buying a refrigerator. Turns out, Samsung stopped supporting the internet browser because, you know, it's software. The refrigerator still works, though. In this case, those speakers probably won't even work. Sonos says we're going to keep them working as long as we can. As long as we can. So, uh, like you, Francis, I think that's it for me and Sonos. I won't be buying uh, speakers anymore. A couple of, I think, important points, however... The, the Sonos speakers were among the first Internet of Things devices we had. This is a problem that's going to happen across the board with any Internet-connected device, whether it's a refrigerator, a light bulb, speakers, a doorbell, a camera. They're computer systems. They will all, at some point, reach the end of life. The company will no longer support them, and their capabilities will be degraded and even, in many cases, disappear. They just become a brick. That's what happens to Internet of Things devices. And so it's important for us to understand that that's when we bought a Sonos, that's what we were buying. We didn't know. Nobody knew. Nobody even had the term didn't even exist, Internet of Things. But that's, in effect, what we're getting, and that's what the future holds. I think it's important from going forward to separate the durable good, the speaker in this case, the refrigerator, the doorbell, from the software, from the computer. Make them two different devices. That way, you can upgrade the computer. Here's a perfect example. You can buy a smart TV that has Roku built in, but at some point, that Roku device in the TV is not going to be upgraded. The TV might work fine, but the, the Roku won't be updated, right? Maybe even stop working. TV should continue to work. Wouldn't it be better instead to just get a TV that doesn't have Roku and an external Roku box, and then when you needed a new Roku, you'd buy a new $99 Roku instead of a new $9,000 TV? Separate the two functionality. And I've said this for a long time. It's better to have separates than have everything all in one. It's more convenient to have all in one, but you're going to see the problem. There's mismatch in, in life cycle between durable goods like a television or speakers and these computer systems. There are other solutions out there. Uh, you know, it, it really just kicks the cane down the road to buy. A, a, a Amazon now has Echoes with pretty good speakers or that you can hook up to your speaker system or Google does that. I would prefer that you buy something you hook up to an existing stereo or speaker system because that can be upgraded. In fact, Sonos even made those. They called them the Sonos Connects. Those can be relatively easily upgraded. And my stereo is not obsolete. Do the same thing. Buy separate speakers, powered speakers if you need to, but have that streaming internet functionality, that all house play, the party mode functionality separate in a, in a device that you can easily and inexpensively upgrade when the inevitable time comes that it is obsolete. That way the TV, the speakers, they'll last a lot longer. Uh, there are some good choices out there. I just read an article on ZDNet, a guy who suggested we have the technology now to design something, maybe a Raspberry Pi-like device that would do everything Sonos did in, down to Amazon Echo and Google Assistant capability, streaming music, party mode. We could sell those devices. We should be able to sell them pretty cheaply and then hook them up to your stereo system. That's what you should be looking for. And there are some choices, including a number of Amazon Echo devices that will do exactly that. You can do the same thing, I think, with some Google, uh, well, like a Google Dot, can't you? And hook it up. Then you've got the software separate from the speakers. So that's my recommendation, Francis. And frankly, that's what I'm going to do going forward. Thanks for uh, the question. I think it's very timely. And, uh, and it really is a hot topic right now. And I don't blame Sonos. I'm not saying shame on you, Sonos. Uh, it's 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 what happens in the computer industry and the technology industry stuff gets obsolete. It's just the mismatch between our expectations and you know for a speaker and our expectations for a computer system. So I don't think it's Sonos' fault. Having said that, I wouldn't buy another Sonos. I wouldn't buy anything that's an all-in-one anymore. Right? Let's separate those functions out. If you have a question for me, you can email me, askthetechguy at twit.tv. I'd love to hear from you. Our show is always brought to you by LastPass, a personal password manager and identity solution for businesses that helps secure everywhere you work and live. Share passwords or notes within LastPass uh, to employees or to family members. Personal or corporate credit cards, pictures of passports can be secured in a vault. And now LastPass Enterprise offers passwordless login options for employees, which increases security and productivity. 
Go to lastpass.com slash twit and find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week on Ask the Tech Guy. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.